What was your, how did you feel when you first saw her standing there naked? Sherman Utley and Ethelyn Rojas were engaged, but there was just one problem. Ethelyn had a lot of personal belongings at her ex-boyfriend's house. One night, Sherman was unable to contact Ethelyn. One of Ethelyn's co-workers mentioned that Ethelyn had planned to retrieve some personal belongings from her ex-boyfriend's house. Sherman, concerned, drove to the residence of Ethelyn's ex-boyfriend, Michael Lee. When he arrived, he spotted her car outside Michael's apartment. Sherman called the police for a welfare check. The officers arrived at Michael's residence and called Michael several times. While the first several calls were ignored, eventually Michael answered. However, Michael stated that he hadn't seen Evelyn recently. The officer calling suspected that Michael was lying. In an attempt to confirm this, the officer requested Michael exit the apartment and speak to the police in person. Michael declined. The police then contacted the apartment manager, requesting emergency access to the apartment which was granted. Upon entering Michael's apartment, the police noticed no signs of anyone's presence. However, upon entering the first bedroom, they saw what appeared to be a body under a blanket. Upon lifting that blanket, they found a nude woman. Her face was blue and swollen. This was the deceased body of Ethelyn Rojas. The police then searched the master bedroom, where they found yet another blanket concealing the shape of a human body. The police called out to the person multiple times. On the fourth call, the blanket moved. From beneath the blanket, a groggy Michael Lee stood up. At least he was acting groggy. Officers believed this to be an act, as if Michael were pretending to have been asleep the whole time. Michael's first words upon waking from his beauty sleep were, I'm not saying anything without my lawyer, a phrase we all commonly use to start the day. Michael was arrested on suspicion of murder and brought to the police station for questioning. This is his interview. But first, a moment of silence for Ethelyn Rojas, a woman who was just about to begin a new phase of life. That opportunity was taken away from her. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and start off with a little introduction, okay? This is the formal introduction part here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read you your rights again, since we did talk about, obviously, um, before we came in here, um, um, about earlier today when, you know, you, you had asked to talk to an attorney. So I just want to make sure that we, we go through the rights. The rights are clear, um, and, and we're clear about your, your intent and, and, and the situation right now. Okay. So I am Detective Michael Wilson of the Puyallup Police Department. This is the statement of Michael A. Lee regarding case number 18276. 02349. Today's date is October 4th, 2018, and the time is now 6.04 p.m. This interview is being conducted at the Puyallup Police Department. Also present is my partner, Detective Scott Lean. Uh, so you understand this interview is being recorded? Yes. Are you okay with that? Sure. Okay. Um, go ahead and state your full legal name for me. Michael Anthony Lee. Michael Anthony Lee, and it's spelled just like uh, it sounds, common spelling. Uh, which one? Uh, all of it. Yes. M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Anthony is A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, Lee, L-E-E. -E. That's correct. Okay, and your birth date? July 4th, 1958. What is your current address? <coughs> um... I use my uh, wife's address. It's uh, 1411 Shelby Lane, Southeast Lacey, Washington. Shelby Lane, Southeast? Yes. You said Olympia? Uh, Lacey. Lacey. 98503. And you said you use that address. Is that you use that as a mailing address? Yes. A mailing address. And because like the apartment, I just recently moved in there. Okay. Um, I think it was uh, August, no, June 26th, I believe it was. June 26th of this year? Yes. You moved into the apartment here in Puyallup? Mm -hmm. Do you know that address? No, I don't. Okay. No, not right off hand, no, right hard. So June, late June, June 26th? June, July. Okay. Um,
Uh, does 2564 South Meridian Street, apartment D, does that sound right? Yeah. 64D. Okay. Um, and then, uh, how about a good contact phone number for you? I, mine, that's the only number I know. Sure. Part. What's your phone number? 360-349-7237. Seven two three seven. That's correct. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Lee, um, you you understand that you have the right to remain silent, and you understand that anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. Okay. Um, do you understand that you have the right at this time to talk to a lawyer and to have him present with you while you're being questioned? Yes. Okay. And do you understand that if you can't afford to hire a lawyer, that one will be appointed to represent you before questioning, if you wish? Yes. Okay, and you, and you understand you can decide at any time to exercise these rights, okay, and not answer any questions or make any statements. You understand all that? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, like, like we discussed um, a, a few minutes ago, um, I came down to, I, I came down there to just let you know, it had been a long wait, but we were getting ready to, to transfer you over to Pierce County Jail. Um, and, uh, and, and while we were talking, you, you said you'd like to go ahead and talk. And, and I just want to make sure that um, even though you requested an attorney earlier today, you want to talk to me now. You haven't had a chance to talk to an attorney, right? Right. Okay. Um, I, but I just didn't want to flow into that thing again. Okay. I was advised never to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to ask you to blow into that thing. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I had told you, uh, I told you that you were going to be booked at Pierce County Jail on murder two, murder second degree. Um, you had asked me what that was. I explained, you know, the difference, particularly with murder first degree, uh, right? That um, we've been, we've been, in, we've been working on this all day today, and we don't know you. This is our first time meeting, um, but based on what we saw today, we don't think that whatever happened today was something that you planned out, that it was something that you thought about or wanted to do, that you had this, um, you know, pre-planned will to, to, to do it, but, um, but that something happened, something happened and something went wrong today. And I think something- was it today or yesterday? Well, I guess yesterday, you're right. It's been a long day <laughs> for me. <laughs> You've slept a little bit, I haven't slept today, so. Um, uh, but yeah, something went horribly wrong. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I, I am interested in wh why. I, I think for the most part, I, I, I think I understand what happened. Um, um, but I know you have a story and, and that's what I'm interested in hearing. So um, I don't know if you had a place you want to start or if you would rather me just kind of ask um, Start by asking questions. Sure. Um, uh, I, I I keep referring to her as Miss Rojas, but um, what what did you what did you call her? And, oh, Ethelene. Ethelene. Okay. And you've known her for quite some time. Uh, two years. Two years. Yeah. Okay. Um. I get the idea. That, that you care about her. I do. You care about her a great deal. I do. Um, so we, she... We struggled a lot when we first met. Did you? Struggled a lot. Uh, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> Sleeping in cars. I had a $9 an hour job. She didn't have a job. I was on active duty uh, for the National Guards. So every chance they got, they put me on orders. So we slept in the barracks when I was on orders. And uh, I don't know. So you guys were living, you guys were living together full time though, whether it was in the car or, or barracks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, were you, what, what did you, how did you classify your relationship? Boyfriend, girlfriend, you weren't married. Yeah. Beyonce or or just yeah. serious or just friends or or 
all of it, all of it together. You know, okay. I'm saying, yeah. Okay. On my part, on hers, see, that's, well, that's another story. She started lying to me a lot, pointing things, and, and just out, outright lying. Um, finally, I got a job for an Amtrak, and I go from Chicago, from Seattle to Chicago. Round trip is like six days. And uh, I'll come back and be looking for things and she'll make me think that I lost it or something, you know? Like, uh, I call it tablet. And come to find out, I found a pawn ticket where she pawned it. Was, you know, like, just tell me, just, you know? She pawned rings. And then she started, I guess, cheating. Found someone else. I couldn't get a place because my credit was bad. And, uh, she, she got evicted in the place because I was paying the rent and I didn't get paid that payday, so she got evicted. And so we uh, were separated for a while, for maybe two months, and then we got an apartment living with her husband, her brother's sister's son. Okay. But we lived there for a while, and uh, then he met someone, so we had to move out. And I believe that's when she met someone else. I believe met someone else. Do you have a time frame, like when that happened? What about the, roughly when that was that you said you think she met somebody else? Actually, um, I seen on her cell phone. Uh, it was like in April of this year. Yeah, pictures. Okay. So going back about two years, you guys were struggling, but you were struggling together. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and things, you know, started looking up. Things started. Oh, they were looking up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Even like the lying and the pawning. When did all that start? Well, you know, I didn't care too much about it. I just wanted to be honest and tell me the truth. Right. That's all. And she smoked it marijuana heavily. Yeah. You know, so. While I was away in Chicago, and she wasn't working, well, actually, she had two jobs. She was working at uh, uh, F FedEx, and early in the morning, and leaving there and going to the YMCA as a janitor. Okay. So, um, I don't think I think maybe she was making both jobs maybe eleven dollars combined an hour okay. for both jobs, something like that. But when I go to Chicago, she she won't have any money for gas or anything like that, so she can start partying stuff. Up. Gotcha. And was she living? She was living wherever you were living. You would go to Chicago. She would stay. Mm -hmm. She would stay where you were living. So your stuff was all there. So that's how she had access to your stuff. Right. We just had a little small room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that we rented from the other guy. When did you start working for Amtrak? Um, last year, November. Okay. Two years ago. Almost two years ago. Uh, okay. Well, November will be two years that I worked for them. Okay. So you started with Amtrak just shortly after you and uh, Ethelene started seeing each other? Mm, no. <clears throat> Prior to that, I worked at the golf course. That's when I met her. And what, what golf course was that? Eagles Pride. Oh, okay. Yeah, Eagles Pride. And like when I was in the National Guards, they'll put me on orders to uh, go to Yakima to right. cook. Right. So I was a cook, or just stay there and on Camp Murray and cook for the soldiers there. So <clears throat> that's how I met her on uh, Plenty of Fish. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's uh, Hispanic, and one of the cooks is Hispanic, so I asked cooks to talk to her, you know, in, in Hispanic. So she did, and I was supposed to meet her at a, at a bar, but I never showed up twice. Okay. And then the third time, I was like, ah, might as well. So I met her. And did you guys kind of hit, hit it off pretty well right from the beginning? You know, red flag should have went up right then and there because 
we was talking maybe about 20 minutes before she reached over the table and kissed me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we went outside and smoked a cigarette. Okay. Yeah. So, but... Overall, are your... Uh... Are your memories with her overall good or overall oh, yeah. good? Overall good? Oh yeah. Oh, she loved me. Okay. Yeah. She makes you happy. She did. Or she brings you some happiness? She did. Until she left me for someone else. When did when did that then you said that was a few months back? I, I you, know, you know, we moved back in together at this place. The and, apartment here in Piaw. Yep. We moved back in together and things was working out good, you know. And when she went to sleep, I looked at her phone and I seen all these pictures of her her and that guy, even in bed together. And underneath the picture, I guess he was messaging it to her. Yeah. And underneath you can see it was April, the date. April. Mm -hmm. So you think that um, she, she started cheating on you back in April? Probably before April because they was in bed already together. Gotcha. Yeah, so maybe. the pictures the pictures of them in bed together already are dated April. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you moved into these apartments here in June. Or just, July. Where were you in April? April, we was with, living with her at family members. Right, 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 right. And he gave us into June. Okay. Uh, to that we had to leave. What city was that in? That's in Fredericton. Fredericton. Um. So when you found out she was cheating on you, did you say anything to her? Did you confront her? Or did you just kind of let it let it go? You know, um, I asked her about what was going on and everything, and she just took off and and moved in with him. We never really got a chance to talk. I really talked about it. I called her every day, texted her, but she never replied back. I asked her what's happening, what did I do wrong, you know. And then one day when I was in uh, in Spokane, coming back to uh, Seattle from Chicago, she uh, voice, uh, voice, how you call it? Uh, Talk voice through it. Yeah, video, video chat. Yeah, okay. video chat. Yeah, with you. Uh huh. And she said that she was over her cousin's house. And I said, oh, "Okay, well, it's nice hearing from you. It's about time. Are you okay? You know?" And she panned the camera around, and I seen that she was in my bed. I says, "Where are you? What are you doing?" She said, "I'm coming home." So I said, "Okay." So, do you remember when this was? I moved in there. <clears throat> I think it was June. So this is July. this is here at this apartment. Yes. So she hadn't lived there when you moved into the the apartment here in Puyallup. You moved in alone. Right. On June twenty sixth. Okay. Yeah. So then you're on a run to Chicago and you're on your way back and you're in Spokane. And this was like June, July, July, I think, July, okay. August. And. Uh, you've been gone for th four days, five days now. She video chat you and she's inside your apartment? How did yeah. she get in there? Well, the first time I moved in, I gave her a key the first, okay. the first day. And I went over, we had uh, stuff in my daughter's garage in Olympia. So I went over there and picked it up. Okay. I just wanted her to see what the apartment looked like. So she came over and was putting stuff away and things like that before she went to work. Okay, but she's still living with this other guy during this time. So she, so you guys are, there's some communication. So she's got a key. So she's, she video chats you. She's in your room. She says she's coming back. Mm -hmm. I imagine for, can you get back maybe the next day? Um, or later that day in the video chat? That was, we was in Spokane. So we was late. So we got back uh, the next day. Yeah. Got back the next day. And I told her, you know, I, you know, it was two bedroom. You stay in one bedroom. I stay in one bedroom things out and you know um, she even said that you know talking on the phone that she didn't want to have sex or anything like that we're just going to be roommates okay you know and what she said was her friend was selling his house and people was 
constantly coming in and out, in and out, looking at the place. So I was like, okay, no problem, you can stay, you know. As soon as I got there, she attacked me. As soon as you got back home? As soon as I walked through the door, she attacked me. What did she do? Wanted to have sex. Oh, okay. <laughs> soon she attacked you in a, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was trying to push her off, saying, no, no, you know, come on now. And then I just gave in, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you ever find out the name of the this other guy? Sherman something, Sherman. Okay. Who was the friend that was selling the house? That's her friend. That's Sherman. Oh, Sherman. okay. Sherman. Okay, I did, that's what I was asking. Yeah, so okay. Sherman's Sherman. selling his house. She doesn't want to She doesn't want to be there with all these people. Coming out. Okay, so she's there. You get home. She she wants to have sex right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you try to discuss like, hey, you know, thought we weren't going to do this. Right, but, right. Okay. But, because uh, while she was going, I was looking for company too, you know. Okay. Had you found anybody else at that point? Well, there was an old friend that I used to live with, and uh, um, Olympia, and she lives in Philadelphia now, but she comes down here to go to work. Okay. So I was letting her to stay in, and um, I bought some food for Ethelene okay. to uh, make sandwiches and stuff like that while she's working, and she was supposed to come by and pick it up. And she did, and I told her, hey, look, I got a friend here, you know, no troubles. Oh my God, so she comes in and just screaming and yelling and everything. Ethelene or the friend? Ethelene. Okay. Yeah. And so I pushed her out, and she got back in her van and took off and then came back because she had dropped her glasses. Okay. And then she took off, and she was saying that she was going to marry this guy and all like that. So is this in the? Is this still in that period in July where she had was living with you? No, or is this a different time? She moved in with me. Uh, she we only lived there for about I would say three three weeks, maybe maybe a little longer. Okay, but July maybe into August. Into August, definitely it was like the beginning of August. Okay. Yeah, August. Yeah. I would say, and then she left again. Okay, what prompted her to leave? Was there a fight? Was there a she said argument? That, no, you know, she she said that I will always bring bring up her leaving and you know cheating on me and stuff like that. I would always bring it up. And I told her, no, I won't. I forgot about it. You know? Okay, so uh, th th you got the two bedrooms there. Which which. Before Ethelin came back in July, after you moved in there in June, first part of July, which bedroom were you using? The one with the, uh, the balcony, the one with the balcony window. Okay. So the one uh, with her clothes in it. Okay. Her clothes. Yeah. All right. Um, the bigger bed. Mm hmm. Right. 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 Okay. So not the one closest to the front door, but. Right. Okay. Um, and then so. When you discuss her being in one room, you being in the other room. No, she never did. She you slept together. In the back bed. bedroom, the big bed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Balcony room. The balcony room. Right, right, right. And it was that way every that was that way every night. Yeah. Okay. Um prior to her moving in, were were your clothes in that closet? No. I I always kept them in the other room because I changed in there. I okay. sat down. Excuse me. I sit down on that bed and change. Cause more the, room. To me, it seemed like it is. Plus, all my work clothes is in there. Okay. My uniform for work. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So then, when she moved in, she she just put all her stuff in the closet in the in the balcony room. Right. Okay. Did you tell her to do that, or she do that on her own? No, I told her she can have that one. Okay. Because you know it's the bedroom, and you're gonna have this closet. So during that two, three week, three week period, um, I mean, it sounds like maybe there were some little arguments or tiffs. So overall, how did you get along? Uh, okay, I, it, most of the time I was gone. Okay, I, you know, working on the train because we go for six days, takes six days round trip, and we're off 
four days. But so the fifth day, we go back to work. Okay. And she works at night. So she worked it from seven at night to seven and thirty in the morning or something like that, twelve hour shift. Okay. So actually we never really saw each other. Okay. And and then her days off didn't correspond with my days off. So when I was in Chicago on the road, she had her days off. Okay. And then when I come back She'd be working. She'll be working. But when you did see each other, you, it, things were good? Yeah, we sit on the balcony, smoke marijuana, drink beer. Sex? You know, talk, yeah. You know, or uh, was it? she stopped She stopped that, so I kind of figured something was going on. Stop, stop what? I haven't sex. Okay. Yeah. So was sex just that one first night, or, or was it, did it just did it go for a little while and the whole I, I, trail off? I think it, it was maybe around. I would say four times. Okay. Four times we had sex when she came back. Okay. Roughly, roughly about four times. And then she took off again. Did one day all of a sudden? Or was there an argument? I came back from Chicago, no argument. And I came back from Chicago and um, I was on the computer and, and we was listening to old music, you know, and singing and everything. Then all of a sudden she got, she received a text. I seen her and she jumped up and said she's going to go clean a car or do something. I really didn't hear her. She didn't come back. Just right out the door? She, she left and I called and called and called and asked her if she's all right. Everything I texted her, she never answered. So she came back the next day in the afternoon and said she was in the hospital with her uh, cousin okay. and didn't have no reception. So I says, no, come on now. And we were sitting on the balcony and she said, here's a check that I received from Geico, the insurance company. Now you can pay some of the bills, the electricity bill. I says, no, I'm fine. You know, go ahead and keep your money. Do whatever you want. She got up. I was still on the balcony. I heard the front door close. She was gone. Did she leave all her stuff? Yeah. She just took a, a um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what she took, but she, she wears suits and ties to work cause she's a funeral. Uh, well, she removes bodies. Yeah. So I bought her all kinds of ties and shirts and suit jackets and everything, but she didn't like them. She didn't like them. So she took a couple, I guess, what did she like? She didn't take no socks, no underwear, anything. Okay. And when was this? When? This is September, right? Right now we're October 4th. October. June. July, August. I'll say like the last part of August. August. Yeah. And did she go back with uh, the other guy? Yep. Uh, Sheldon? What did you say his name was? Sherman. Sherman. How do you know she went back with him? <clears throat> when I called and talked to her, and she said, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I went back to him. I said, okay. Okay. Mm. Feel like she's just tugging, tugging you around? Or, or how's this make you feel? How are you feeling at this point? Well, you know, kind of bad, you know? I was like, wow, you know, all the things I did, did for you, you know? Yeah. Bought you all this stuff. You didn't have to pay no bills while you was living with me. Bought food, cooked, everything, you know? To show you how much I love you. During those couple weeks, there in July, August, when she was um, living with you here in Puyallup, you're still making your every, you know, six days, right. six day trip, four days home. When you would come back from your six day trip, was stuff still disappearing? Or had that stopped? That was, that was well, before. She, she was going then, so. She was, oh, you mean this, this was, um, when I she mean, was during that whole stuff? period when she's still living with you here. No, she started pointing things when we was living with, um, the guy and uh, the family's mm -hmm. son. 
So she wasn't doing the pawning thing here. In Piala. Right. Yes, she pawned one ring. One ring? Yeah, she was postal pawning a, a pair of air rings. Okay. And I got home and I looked in the drawer and it says, where's my ring at? There's your ring? Yeah. There's a men's ring? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of ring was it? Um, had a diamond in it. Gold? Both sides, yeah. $300, I think it was. Okay. So what she say? Oh, I don't know what happened to it. And then she finally told me she pawned it. Okay. Just like the tablet. You know. Did she tell you where she pawned it? I mean, did she? Did you get I went with her to the pawn shop, but I didn't go inside. I stayed outside smoking. Uh, so you were with her when she, but you didn't know she was pawning your ring. Right. It was supposed to be the earrings. Gotcha. Yeah. But were you able to get it out upon? No. She told me about, well, after I noticed it was missing, because I never really wore it, you know, because I work in food service. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Sure. But when I seen it was missing, then she told me. Okay. Well, so, then she goes back, she's with the other guy, Sherman, Sherman for a while. And then, uh, and, and we know you. We know you guys met up last night. Were there any other meetings in between, um, kind of August September? <clears throat> nope, that was uh, shoes. I begged them for there uh, to bring you some cigarettes. This is last night, right? Okay. Well, I texted her Monday. I think it was. Okay. Monday or Tuesday, I texted her. If she could please bring me a pack of cigarettes, and never heard back from her. And she said, uh, I'll call you soon. And never heard back from her. Okay. And then she came over Wednesday. But prior to that. Wednesday after, meaning yesterday? Yes. Okay. Yesterday. She came over yesterday with the cigarettes. Okay. So she brought you some cigarettes. What kind of, how are you communicating? Just text message or phone calls or an app? She, she never, she never uh, answered her texts. Okay. Every once in a while, she'll text me something. I'm okay. Because I told her I was worried about you. You never answer or reply or answer me back. And then she'll tell me she's with him. You know, so I said, okay. I won't bother you no more. Okay. Um, but this is all just over regular text message. Not mm -hmm. like Facebook message or no. Snapchat. Or... She blocked me from all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what... Uh, what what did you guys talk about uh, before she showed up on Wednesday? You said bring me some cigarettes. Right. Just bring me some cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, did she owe you some cigarettes, or did she have why why? No, you know I, I bought I buy cigarettes and beer and stuff like that all the time. She put gas in her car. She never had to do any of that. Stuff. Okay. So like so, you need something, you feel like hey, you mind picking me up some cigarettes? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, but. I try to reply her back to tell her, hey, I'm going to go pawn on television. I forgot I had these TVs here I can go pawn. Because okay. I was waiting for Friday to get paid so I could go pay the rent and drink some beer. And I says, oh, whoa. So I went and got $40, got me a beer and uh, some cigarettes. Came on home. And Wednesday? Right. And then she showed up. Um, I, I want to say, she has to be to work at 7. Okay. 7 or 7.30, one of them, two. so probably about 6 o'clock. Okay. And did she bring cigarettes? Yep, she brought me cigarettes, and she wanted her black coat because she said it was getting cold outside. And I just asked her, I said, why do you, why you do this all over again? What's going on? Why do you do this to us? And she said that, give her a couple of days that she's going to, make up mind up what she wants and all this other stuff. And I says, no, it's okay. No more coming back, you know, just try to work things out with whoever you with, you know. And she said, okay, she went into the room and was going to get, I guess, some things. And I went out in the balcony and sat. She was calling me, next thing I know, she was calling me, she was in there naked. So I was like, what 
the hell? Why you did it? And after that, I don't know what the hell happened. After that, I don't know. She was in the, the bedroom and you were out she on the went, balcony? Right, and she was calling me. Through the window? I, she wanted to have sex, so that's what I was saying. Was she calling you through the bedroom window or had she come around like over by the kitchen area and was calling Oh, at the bedroom down? window? Bedroom window? Huh? Not like in the doorway of the bathroom and calling me. What exactly did she say? Michael, come here, Michael, come here. How did you know she was naked? <laughs> because I cut off her and I went in there and she was standing there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't know she was naked when she was calling you? Right, right. I thought she wanted something, so. So you come around, so now you're in the bedroom, and what? where is she in the bedroom? She wanted to, she said, come on, let's do a quickie real quick. Okay. And I'm like, no, get out of here. And then after that, I, I can't remember what happened. I don't know. So she was, uh, was she standing up or was she laying down when she, when when you first when you first walked, she was in standing room. up. She was standing up because that's an air mattress, and it doesn't have that much air. You know, then you got to put air in it, so it's not really sturdy. So she the big bed? Are you talking about the? You're talking about the front bedroom, right? That's where she was naked at, right? Okay. Uh -huh. I thought you said she was in the balcony bedroom. <laughs> I was on the balcony. Okay. And she was calling me in the hallway by the bathroom yeah there's a bathroom right there yeah and she was calling me okay and i was in the balcony so okay. i got up and came in and then she was in the bedroom the so bedroom by the front door right right okay and she went into the door quick okay yeah, I um remember what happened then. so <clears throat> you said she got to your house about six o'clock I, I would think so ish yeah um and then what was the first thing you guys when she so she gets to your house she comes up the stairs does she do you let her in does she just walk in no she, she rang the doorbell bang on the door then bang on the uh, window and i open it up with my foot there and i said i don't want no drama please no trouble please you know, she said all right just give me my coat just give me my coat because it's getting cold outside i says Okay, just, you know what, just wait right here and I'll go get it. And so I went to look for it. I didn't know she's got a bunch of black coats. So then I and said, they're all in the back bedroom. I uh, know they're in the hallway. In the hallway, okay. Mm -hmm. So I says, okay, well, I don't know which one you want. Just come on in and get it. Okay. So she came in, then what happened? Uh, that's when I went out on the balcony. Okay, and you said you were, you were just smoking some cigarettes yeah. or marijuana? Uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes and yeah. drinking some beer? Mm hmm Okay. At that point, um, I mean, it's already getting on, you know, six. It's evening time. Do you, do you have any idea about how much you've been, had you been drinking kind of throughout the evening or had you just started drinking at that point? Or? I, had, I had two 40s. Two? Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind, um, what kind of 40s? Uh, old English. Okay. So are you do you remember kind of how you're feeling at this point when she when she says she's coming in to get her coat you know they uh, feeling okay i mean because um it's it's like those they don't even do anything for me no more i'm used to it gotcha yeah so i mean so you went out on the balcony then so you're you're smoking cigarette you sitting or are you standing on the balcony we got two chairs so okay. i'm sitting down and she never came out on the balcony with you. So she, you think she's getting the coat, but the next thing she's is nice she's calling you. Yeah. You think she needs something, so you go in there. And so at this point, is she, I mean, is it, is this five minutes after she got there, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? How long about do you think she'd been there um, when um, she when she calls you in? And, and not she's long in the at all. Naked. Not long at all because she has to go to work. Okay. Yeah. When she showed up, what was she wearing? Uh, a suit, tie, and stuff. Work clothes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Or shoes or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They was they wasn't in the bedroom. Uh, what do you, what kind of shoes were they? Um, I don't know. Black. That really didn't even pay no attention okay. so much. So when she was when you went in the room and she was naked, did did, did you see where her clothes were? Wasn't paying no attention. They weren't on the floor, obviously, or anything like that. They they could have been on the bed because my stuff I had just washed uh, clothes, 
So, okay. yeah, it could have been mixed up in that stuff. I don't know. Okay. I really didn't know. Um, so just like that first day there, you know, I mean, it sounds like you're wanting, you're wanting some kind of, you're wanting her to stop waffling. You're wanting some kind of A or B, commit right. one way or the other. Right. Commit to me or commit to him. And she just kind of keeps going back and forth. Toying well, she went, yeah. with you a little bit. Maybe even toying with, you think she's toying with Sherman too? You don't know? I don't know. Um, so then, uh, that first day you came back, you're, you know, the, the intent was separate bedrooms. But when when she came on to you, she, you know, kind of hard hard to resist. You gave in, I think was your words. Mm -hmm. um, so then last night now, you're thinking the same thing, just get your stuff and get out of here. But now she's calling you and she's naked. Is it the same kind of thing? You think, I mean, like you gave in? No. Uh, no. After that, I came in there, I don't remember after that. Okay. I know we didn't have sex. No sex. Okay. So, like... How do you know that? That... That you didn't have sex? I didn't penetrate her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Were you guys fooling around a little bit at all? I mean, kissing or, or rubbing or anything like that? Or... Nope. What was your... How did you feel when you first saw her standing there naked? I can't remember. Anger? Did you get mad at her? I mean, she's been toying. She's been toying with you. Is that what's in your mind, or, or is is it? I mean, are you? She wants you, obviously. Is it? Are you excited that she wants you, or are you <laughs> mad that she's toying with you, or is yeah. it something else completely? You know, she used to tell me that sex was good, and she don't know why she's with this guy. And, you know, just, like you said, toying with me, saying all these different things to make me feel good and then make me feel bad. You know, so my emotions was going like a roller coaster. I don't know what to do. So let me just leave her alone, mm -hmm. you know. And that particular day, I don't know what happened. Yeah. I mean, things got, things got crazy at that point. Wish I wouldn't have opened up the door. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, we, you know, we know that we know we know things went bad that's where things went bad right right um we could see you being on a roller coaster from what you're telling absolutely. me absolutely i'd be on a roller coaster you yeah. know what is going on i mean i i get it as, as a as a as a as a guy you know I'd i get it man i, I don't know what i'm at. i mean i so. neglected my own son that lives in olympia uh, 12 years old uh -uh. <clears throat> just to buy things for her yeah yeah and I recently just now started seeing my son and giving him money so you realize at some point she's using you right is that what it... and so did you feel like did you feel manipulated of course you know and then when she's standing there naked does that like it brings it back that here she is trying to manipulate you again. <laughs> yeah, I'll be so. Yeah. Um, Do you want some more? Are you okay? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. you. Just get a. I wonder. You know where a bottle? Get a whole bottle of water so he's not having to drink out of stupid. Let me go figure it out. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll figure it out. Take a lean out. Eighteen forty-five hours. Eighteen forty-five. Yeah. yeah. I'll go find it. Somebody. Um. So, I'm, I mean, I know this is this is where the conversation gets hard, right? Because this is where stuff happens that I think probably you're regretting. Um, I can see that there is a lot of emotion. I can see that there is a lot of feeling, right? And um, like we were talking about, you know, people people get images and they they paint they paint pictures that maybe aren't true. Um, and one of the, one of the, one of the pictures that we paint is cold blooded and I don't sense cold blooded out of you. I sense a human. 
with some feelings. And it's like Detective Lane was saying, you know, I think our, our emotions, our feelings can only take so much jerking around. And this, I get that woman every day that I have. I figured we'd all might need some water. <laughs> so, so we are drinking. I'm starting to get thirsty. So, yeah, you're welcome. They're brand new. They're not cold, but I found some. So we'll all drink water together. Would you rather drink it out in the bottle or out of yeah. the cup there? No, this is fine. Okay. Um, Did you, did you? Did you mean to hurt her? No, I didn't. Not not like the way she was hurting me so many times. I was I was really proud of her because the way the, where she started from, working in hotels. Working at FedEx, and she worked at Amazon, and she wasn't really making much money. And she was living with her daughter in DuPont, and her daughter went to Germany. So um, after that, I don't know where she was at. Mm -hmm. But I was staying in my car, and she said she was with some somebody because she had to take showers, which is true, you know? And um, every time I got paid, we'll go in the hotel when I had the extra money. We'll stay in the hotel for two or three days. And this is back when you're still living in the car. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like I said, I was really proud of her. She got a brand new car, paid off some credit, got a credit card, got a driver's license back. And um, and this is over. This is over time while she's with you. Mm -hmm. She's kind of getting life back in order. Right, right. And you're helping her. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Well, we went wrong. I never physically touched her or anything. Okay. I mean, she used to say emotionally. Oh, you mean over the relationship? The you, the, the couple of years you guys were dating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did she ever was? Did she ever um, attack you in a bad way? I mean, like, she ever beat on you, hit on you, hurt you? Yeah, she do things at me, smack me, wave knives at me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I just used to laugh. I used to laugh at it. I mean, it was pretty serious, but sure. Try to make, try to make a make the rest of it. When you'd laugh at like her, kind of like, what, what was her reaction? Is that that is that how it kind of de-escalated her, mm -hmm. her stuff? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Are you pretty good at calming her down, or or was she hard to calm down when she got upset? And she was she was okay. I mean, I really never noticed because she she would take off. So, yeah. Okay. How about you when you get upset? Are you pretty easy to come down or do you, yeah. when you get upset, do you stay upset? No, no, it's calm down and just forget it, let it go. It just seems like she, she's kind of feisty and you're kind of the, let's keep it together, calm, cool, you know what I mean? Right. So, I don't know, it was like, must have been a challenge, like, cause she's, just seems like she's kind of feisty and you're the level headed one. I don't know. That's just kind of what it seems like. Yeah. She, wow. Um, when you look back at, uh, last night then, um, was there, I mean, were you yourself? Yeah. Since I, cause I'm on vacation, so I got back last Saturday, I think it was. So, well, they put me on vacation from the 27th to uh, the 2nd. 
So, but my crew went out. So I don't have to come back for the second. The next time is on the seventh. Okay. When when we rotate to go back out. Okay. So uh, from that Saturday until I ran out of money and cigarettes, that's all I was doing was just drinking beer, watching television or going on the internet, sitting on a balcony drinking beer. So. And that's what that's what was going on when she when she showed up Wednesday night. Right. Okay. It was just doing the same thing. Well, so you know, here's here, here's what we know. We know we know she got hurt. She got hurt badly, right? Um, and I, and I know you know she got hurt badly. Um, how, how did that happen? I can't remember. I don't know. I I don't know what sparked it off, or or what. what happened. Were either of you holding anything, or were or was it just empty hands? Yeah. Yeah. I just covered her mouth and her nose. Okay. Yeah. Empty hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you How did you cover her mouth and nose? Just with my hands. Both hands. Okay. Were you standing behind her or? No, sitting on top of her. Sitting on top of her. Okay. Was she on the floor, on the bed or? On the floor. Okay. What, um, and it just happened. It just wasn't, happened. you didn't, you didn't plan this. No. And I guess all the frustration that I was going through just came out. Okay. Well, do mm -hmm. what was she doing when when you had when you were covering her mouth and nose? She was kicking and screaming. Okay. Was she laying? She was laying on the floor on her back. Yeah. Okay. And where were you positioned relative to her? You said you were on top of her. I'm just trying to. Were you? Right on the back. I said, I can't remember all that stuff. I can't remember all that. What was her... What was her attitude or, or body language or demeanor like when, when she said, let's have a quickie? Uh, that, when she did that, I just exploded. And she was sleeping with another guy. I think she wants to have sex with me, you know. Feeling kind of used? Yeah. Because she used to text me, oh, you don't know how um, to do the things you do. And Oh, she was saying that to you? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. That she never touches him. She doesn't have all sex with him. You know? And I'm like, you're lying, you know? Come on now. If you're not happy, then why are you there? Come back home. That's yeah. just what I used to tell her. So she had to be happy. Well, she wouldn't have been there, you know. So was she... That initial moment when she said, let's have a quickie, was she... Was she smiling when she said it, or was she... Laughing and smiling. Was she being coy? Was she, being, yeah. was she trying to be sexy, or... And I used to tell her that she shouldn't smoke marijuana before she go to work, and I can smell it on her. She smoked it before she came in, so. And you can smell it on her then? Yeah, I used to tell her you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You gotta go to work. Yeah. You gotta drive in. Yes, sure. Yeah. You know. Yep. And she did it anyway. Yeah. So you said when uh, when she said that. You just kind of exploded. Did I mean? Did, did you? Did you? Did you feel yourself go pop? Mm, what? 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 Tell me about that. What? I just exploded. What does that mean? What does that look like for Michael Lee? I, I've exploded. I, you know, we've exploded. I'm just in this moment, this time. What did? What did that mean for you? Right now, 
exploding. You know, he just had enough. Enough is enough, you know. All that anger that you had is coming out now. You know? Did you feel like you were in control of yourself? All, all the time, I'm in control of different situations. You know? Yeah, but did, do you ever feel like, you, or in that moment, did you feel like you lost control of yourself, or did you feel like you emotionally or whatever you exploded, but you you still you still had control of yourself? Yeah, I guess I can remember that. Okay, but what you do remember is. Maybe just grabbing her and throwing her down and hand on her mouth and nose. Covering up. And when the neighbor came to talk to him, I seen a car, parked it. Were you saying anything to her when you had your hands on her, on her mouth? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Was she saying anything to you? Or I mean, I get it, you're, you're trying to cover her with. Yeah. What's not? Just breathe and trying to breathe, I guess. But she she could in a pillowcase set. Everybody else uses the Amtrak uh, uh, sets and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, towels and uh, sheets and pillowcases and things like that. There's a closet in the hallway, and there's towels on top of it. I guess when I was moving, I put it there. And I had seen it the other day, and it's on the bed. It's still inside the case, the pillowcase itself. So I threw the old one away. Okay. The new one is still inside the case? Mm -hmm. On top of the uh, bed. Okay. And you threw it away just because you got a new one? It didn't have anything to do with the blood? How long has that blood spec been on there? Uh, you know, I just now noticed it when I washed it, and it, I guess it didn't come out. It could be candy. I don't know. Okay. It looks like it would have came out. But those those mattresses that we sleep on are pretty filthy. Okay. You got that bed bugs and all that stuff. Oh, on the trains? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I take lice on that spray oh. and stuff. Yeah. You're a very clean man. <laughs> yeah. Your, your well, apartment was very, very well kept. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I work with food, so. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Except for the bed, I just washed the clothes, threw them over there, so I was sitting right now. Put that over there. The handcuff key way. Don't know, I used to have one of the other the room. I'm sitting here watching that. Oh, wait, you know what I did? I bought it. Sorry, I actually, here, I should have thought of this earlier. I'm sitting here watching the clock right now. Oh. They don't, oh wait, do I have one? No, I don't have one here. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, I should have done that a long time ago. Oh. All right. Well, there was a lot of empty beer bottles in the garbage can. Yeah, there were a few. Yeah. yeah. My hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it was two on top of the counter too. Yeah. Two on top of the counter. Those were the two from last night. Uh, the night before. Night before. Where were the two from last night? Did they make their way in the garbage cans? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, 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 those two. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't put it in here. Didn't have any food. I was making spam. Um, Is that what was in the frying pan? Yeah. We were trying to figure out what I did. We yeah, were trying to figure out what that was. We didn't know. It was spam? Okay. <laughs> we got an interview going on in Spam, okay. I'll have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it just came over when I was cooking and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, like I told you, um, our biggest question is, is, is the story behind just the facts. Just the facts can be really boring and can paint the wrong picture, right? The story behind what's going on, your story, um, is what fills it in. Um, there was obviously a lot more going on, you know, what you're telling us, what's been going on over the last several months. There's no way we can understand that by looking at a room, right? Um, I want to make sure, yeah, I'm just trying to make this thing closing constantly here. There we go. Um, I want to make sure that we, that we don't, um, that we don't miss anything. Okay. If there's something, you know, if there's something in here, if there's something in here um, that you want to say or that needs to be said, uh, I want to make sure we get that. I want to make sure that, that we have the the whole story, mm -hmm. right? The truth about what happened. Um, you agree, we agree, something horrible happened. Um, and you pay for it. You've said that. You've said it several times. You wish you would have done it differently. You wish you could take it back. You wish it didn't happen. Um, she was a good person. She was really good, but she was just too deviant. How did she get that under your skin? How did she... She's the one, right? You you told me that other, other women have, you know, it's not your first time uh, in that in that rodeo and, and other times you've been able to just walk away. What was it about her that was able to get under your skin like that? Was she special? Was she, was she different than, than the other women you've dated or not really? Not really. I mean, she didn't, she never asked for anything. But the other one is always used to ask a hundred dollars here, three hundred dollars, probably be there, take me shopping. But that Delaine never did. She used to just say, "Hey, um, I need some gas or something like that." You know? Okay. Yeah, she never really never asked for anything. Yeah. Well, she would text me to bring cigarettes home and a beer. I, you know, we make tips on the train. And those guys, the waitresses upstairs, there's two of them, and they share anywhere between $2,800 to $3,000 in tips between themselves, and then they'll come and tip the chef and the food specialist. So sometimes I used to come home with about $150 in tips. I used to just give it all to her. Mm. Just give it all to her. Is there a party that's glad you don't have to deal with it anymore? Well, I didn't have to no more because she had moved out. You know, uh, she moved out, but she kept coming back every time she moved out. Well, she was never really out of your life. Once she came in, she she would come and go, but she was never really no out out was she? Uh, yeah. She left when we was living with this guy. I think it was, well, he gave us until June, but she was seeing this guy way back in April. So, <clears throat> I believe that's when she left, back in April. And then I, I got that apartment in June 26, I signed the lease. And she moved 
then the end of July, beginning of August, I believe it was. It wasn't even that long. It wasn't that long. Well, it, it goes by so fast because, like I said, I'm on a train. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back off the train, the four days that I'm off, on the fifth day I go back, she's at work. So it just seemed like we never met and greet each other. Mm -hmm. you know, either she was at work or I was at work. When I'm at work, I'm gone. I don't get to come back at night. So. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really, um, I'm going to just ask you to give us a couple minutes. I'm going to get you another bottle of water. You want another bottle of water? Sure. Okay. Um, we'll be back uh, here with a bottle of water here in just a couple minutes. Okay. Um, like I said, I mean, oh, we're stepping on. It's nothing secret. I just want to kind of look over notes and make sure that, um, you know, that we don't have any other questions for you and whatnot. And then I told you we'd get back to uh, answering your questions as far as, you know, the stuff in your apartment and whatnot. So I'm not going to forget about that. We're going to take care of that too. Okay. Okay. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. It's uh, 7.59 right now. Um, we'll be back in two, three, four minutes.
here in the present. <laughs> oh, this is over. Oh, you found the water. Oh, okay. Thank you. Here. Alrighty. Um, her pants when she showed up. I know she. You said she wears mostly black. Do you remember anything different about the pants she was wearing last night? No, the, the only thing that I know is she likes to wear tight pants. Okay. Do you remember anything with gold? Do you have gold pockets, gold lined pockets, or gold, some kind of gold accent or anything on the pants? Black pants, but mm -hmm. with gold on them. You don't remember anything about that? Okay. Black pants with gold on them. Like, like maybe dust or something. Dust. Well, like or maybe, like maybe this part of the pocket here is oh. is gold, or maybe the inside of the pocket is like gold color, or something like that. I don't, I don't think she would wear anything like that to work. No. I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Um. Tell me about the the pistol underneath your bed. Uh, I bought that in Yakima. Maybe about five, four or five years ago. Okay. I had a gun show. Okay. I think it was only like a hundred and some dollars. Okay. Um, any particular reason? Uh, there's a million reasons to buy a firearm. I'm just wondering if you had a, if you had a reason for, for <coughs> buying it. Yeah, I mean, you know, take it to the range and shoot it. How often you go to the range? Um, actually, I never did. Okay. But one of the soldiers had a buddy who had a friend who made weapons. So I used to go, this is a Yakima, so I used to take it over there and shoot it at his target practice. Okay. They're pretty accurate. Whatever time, I forgot what kind of it is. But I, I think I'm shot it maybe around about three or four times okay. Yeah. okay but you bought it just for a hobby kind of thing yeah and it never really turned into a hobby no it's too bulky and heavy and yeah okay. so I just, when was the last time it was uh i mean obviously you moved in there june 26th and it went under your bed has it been on been under there since or has it ever yeah. been been out since you uh, lived there nope never i used to have it hanging up in the closet in uh, the belt that it's in. Okay. But I put it in, in uh, 
I don't need to pay it this time. Okay. Um, when you were on the phone with the officer, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit because these were the, the, I was going through thinking what, what are the things I wanted to ask about. Okay. Um, so you're on the phone with the police officer um, and he's asking you, well, first of all, you told him that you were down in Olympia or Lacey at your daughter's house. Um, and he was, uh, you know, telling him that they wanted to check on athlete and make sure she's okay. Um, at the end of that conversation, um, uh, you know, you, you told him to come back with a search warrant and then you, you ended the conversation with, do you remember that? You don't remember telling him that? <laughs> do you remember, uh, do you remember them at, you, you told me you remember them saying something about, you know, talking to the manager and getting yeah. a key uh -huh. and coming in. Um, do you remember anything about the conversation after that? No, they just said, um, we're going to go to the manager and get a key, Jeff. Okay. Something like that. And I heard him come in. And Did it seem like how much time passed from the phone call to the time they came in? I don't know. Okay. I'll be honest with you. Could you narrow it down to minutes or hours? Minutes, okay. maybe about no more than 30 minutes. Okay. Um, do you remember, do you remember telling them that, uh, that you'd be back in 45 minutes? So they were in Olympia or you were in, I keep saying Olympia. You told them you were in Lacey. Um, and then you don't remember saying I'll be back in 45 minutes. <laughs> no. I don't even remember having a conversation. I remember the phone ringing, and they said they wanted to come in or something and and, and go get to them. And then I said, "Okay." I don't remember. Do you do you remember saying okay, or do you remember telling them no, don't come in, I, or don't go in my apartment or something like that? Yeah, I think I told them don't go in there. So when I search warrant or something, I okay. Yeah, I can't remember. But you don't remember telling them you'd be you you you'd come back. Mm -hmm. You right. do or not? I remember. Um, no, I remember saying, "I see your car and I see Delene's car." Okay. And so I know you're there. I remember that. Okay. And I just laid back down. Just go. Okay. Um. When you described after you had your hand on her mouth, you described it kind of looking like her face just kind of went just something. Sunk. Yeah. What sunk? It's it's in like like around here. Not her eyes, but right around here. Her jaw, cheek? Yeah, all this. Okay. It just it seemed like it just sunk in for some reason or not. What do you mean by sunk in? Okay. Like that. Okay. Um, and then that was and then did you move did you move her from the hallway into the bedroom right away or did you go away and then come back and then move her right away i guess i believe it was right away did you think about anything like did you well did that's, you... that's when the guy knocked on the door i guess because uh the, the stumping and thump stopped okay. so maybe around both Five or ten minutes, he came and knocked on the door. The neighbor. Okay. Um. Did you, did you, do anything to, um. To try to help her. 
at that point? To revive her? Yeah. I can't remember if I did or not. Working on a train, have you, do you guys get trained in CPR or anything? Yeah, I tried that idea. I did hit a chest like that. Okay. Do you get do you get CPR training every year or mm -hmm. like that you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you tried chest compressions? Mm -hmm. no. Did you try any breaths? No. No breath. Okay. Why? I, don't know. I thought I heard it hissing. I was doing a chest compression. I think I broke my ear too. And I heard it. it was his, she was hissing something. What kind of hiss? Like that. Okay. Well, because her body, her body was totally limp. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. I was going to say, her calling for medical aid. Did I? Think about that. Yeah. Should have. Why do you think you didn't think about that? It just happened so fast and I was scared and that's why I just laid down. Well, I'm going to go to prison now. You thought that? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to lay down. Is that what you, you said you were scared? Is that what you were, you were scared of? Yeah. I were you scared of anything else? But when you guys when you guys came in, I knew it wasn't shooting. <laughs> I was scared of that. The officers were a little scared too, because you were. They couldn't see anything because you were all turtled up underneath your blankets, and they. They had heard that you had a, a pistol, and so they were they were worried about getting shot too. So, both who both told, who told <laughs> them I had a pistol? Both sides, apparently. Um, Ethelene knew about it. Yeah. She she knew about it, so she told other people about it. No, oh. other people know we have it. Everybody's glad nobody was shooting. That's good. Yeah. All right, Mister Lee. Is there anything else you can think of? Um, it's just needs to be said. About this incident, I'm just so sorry it happened. I don't know. If there was, if, if, if her family was here right now, and you had one thing you could say to them, is there something that you would you you could say from your heart? Do you think? Yeah. I apologize to him. I'm very sorry. Okay. What, what, what were you sorry for? What would you be sorry for? I should have just walked away from her. Should just, just let her leave her alone. Should have left her alone. Anything else you would? I, you know, the thing is, I have text messages, but I used to delete them. Uh -huh. The things she used to say to me, I'll never forget you, I always will love you. You know, things like that. And, it's, and, then, and then I text him, well, why are you with this guy? Why are you, if you're not happy, you know? I, I, don't, I just didn't understand it. Yeah. Do you, still have, do you still have those messages saved, you said? No, I deleted them. I I just, yeah, I used to delete them. And I mean, I got voicemails. I saved all our voicemails that she said. Is there um, is there stuff in your phone that would um, that you could show us that would, you know, I guess support all the story? Like it would messages between you guys that would show her flip flopping and sometimes being, you know, really loyal and then sometimes being not even answering you or. Is everything all deleted? Yeah. Okay. How about photographs of you guys or anything like that? Yeah, I got some, some photos. Okay. No, nah, most of it's on the computer. Okay. 
is there anything uh anything in any of those that and this is just a yes or no question is there anything on your computer or your phone that you wouldn't want us to see or know about there's some new pictures of her of her yeah okay you guys are both adults right yeah uh, i'll let you in on a little secret you guys aren't the only ones doing that. <laughs> um, is your would you would you be all right with us looking at old messages or anything between you guys on your phone? If you can find them, I deleted them. I don't know about the last one this time. Maybe. Is, your, is there a pet code or pattern or something to get into your phone? No. Nope. Your phone just unlocks right up. How about your um, computer? Uh, that's the password. What's What's the password on that? Shit, I got to show you on the keyboard. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the letter three. You go all the way down, hit shift, and then do the same thing again. On a regular keyboard? Yep. And we say all the way down, just down to the bottom row? Like Z or X or something like that. You want to show? Oh, look at that. You want to show, I mean, do you want to show what you mean? <laughs> well, well, this one is kind of... Yeah, I didn't know if it would be... So okay, so you go to three. And then hit shift. And, and then do the same, same thing. thing again. Okay. And then like every month, I'll do it. Do one, then Q, A, Z. Did shift. I'm gonna just right move it right down, down the. Right. Oh, that's pretty smart. <laughs> pretty good. You gotta. They make you change your password so much. You gotta come up with some way to remember the new password every couple months. All right. Um. Okay. Now it's your turn. Questions for us. Start with the first one. The stuff in your apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, um, any family member, whatever, you can, you can have them come pick it up. Um, Jeff let us know that, uh, and he said you had made arrangements, but September rent was already yeah. missed. Uh -huh. So the apartment, um, the apartment complex, uh, you know, they're starting the eviction process. Right. Um, and the eviction process is long and costly for them and it you know it it, it becomes a, a mar on your um residential history too yeah. so the easiest thing if you know if you're amenable to it they'd be they'd be more than happy to do it they're they'd be willing to bend over backwards to make it so they don't have to go through the eviction process mm -hmm. so if you make arrangements with them that my son or my daughter whoever somebody is going to come pick up all my stuff once they get all my stuff, then I'll release the apartment back to Meridian West. Um, and like I said, they'll, they'll be happy to make those arrangements. So if there's somebody, in fact, I, I write it down. If there's somebody who you want to go get your stuff that you trust or keep it safe for you or can put it in storage for you or something like that. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's husband, Joshua Smith. I don't know any of any numbers. Okay. Daughter's husband, Josh Smith. How old he get? Where does he live? Uh, they live in Olympia. Okay. They um, have to coordinate with management to yeah, come up. Yeah, and then management. Jeff has there. that key. Okay. They'll help. So. They'll help facilitate. The, they're more than welcome to help assist to facilitate to get your belongings. Okay. It's yeah. not that much. Yeah. Some nice stuff in there, little tables and stuff. Yeah. You know? Uh, what about at the leads? Can hers be released to a family? Um, it's going to be hard to it's going to be hard to have an outside party go in and sort out what's yours and what's theirs and well, I mean, what's yours and what's hers. Yeah. Um, so if if for example Josh, they'd probably let Josh go in there and get everything, uh -huh. and then Josh could take ethylene stuff and package it separately, and then he Josh could give that to ethylene's family. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Obviously, the woman's clothes to stand out. They're not yours. Yeah. I don't think. So. Yeah. Most. That's the only thing it is. Just the clothes, shoes. 
socks and underwear. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? So, the transcription doesn't get too crazy, is we'll end this, and then uh, and then we can answer you know, whatever yeah, all questions he has. Yeah. So, so um, Michael, do you, do you feel like there was any force used or any threats made or any promises made by us to make you say anything that you said today? No. Everything you said today was free, voluntary, your own free will. That's cool. Talking to us, right? Um, is there is there anything else, just before we close, whether it's, you know, we talked about if you could say something to Ethelene or Ethelene's family or whatever, to the to the judge uh, in the case or just anything else that you want, you want the world or you want the court or whoever to know. Yeah, just that I made a horrible mistake and I have to pay for it. When will I, when will I, just get a judge, be sentenced and all that stuff. Yeah, that I'll I'll talk, tell you all about that. I'm gonna go ahead and just end this. We're gonna turn off the recording, okay? And then, okay. And then we we can answer all, all those questions for you. So uh, we're ending the statement at eight twenty five PM on October fourth, two thousand eighteen. Okay, well yeah, you go ahead. Have you signed? This is me. Michael Lee was sentenced to 15 years in prison for the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Ethelyn Rojas.